Good morning and welcome back everybody. Um, today I've got shit lives going on. In like three days I'm flying to Saudi Arabia for five days and we've been invited to go and fish in a fishing tournament over there. Big prize money on the line, 60,000 US first prize, so we're taking it pretty seriously. So, I'm just in the middle of packing, trying to organize my gear. And I realized yesterday I've never actually done a trip preparation video and like how I go about getting all my stuff ready and what I take on a trip. So, it's a first and we're gonna go through it. Wish me luck. All right, so this particular trip, like I said, it's two days of fishing. The area that we're fishing is pretty similar to um, the Great Barrier Reef, I guess, same kind of species that we're targeting and the same style of fishing, we're jigging and popping. Yeah, I'll take heavy popping gear, stick baiting gear and lighter stick baiting gear and a range of jig stuff as well. So um, I'll show you what I got organized so far. Not very organized at all, really. All right, so we got the light tackle stick baits here. Big floating stick baits there. Next one are uh, sinking stick baits and then the popping stuff, poppers and jigs here. So basically what I've got to do, I've got to go through and I've got to make a selection because obviously I'm not going to take all of those for two days fishing. So I'm going to pick my favorites out of each category. Um, just to give you a look, we got the two Yemen's, new Yemen colors, the Albino Fighting Yemen and the Winged Lumo Yemen. That just went up for sale actually last night. There's more coming as well. You'll be able to buy them eventually when they come back. Um, these are all the Black Ledge ones. We've got some red tanks, carbon to gamma, OTL 50 gram, two sirens there, two nomads, sea falcon, MB custom, missing at sea, and jack fins. So I've got to pick. With this light tackle stuff, it's going to be predominantly casting over um, shallow reef, all that kind of stuff, similar to the Great Barrier Reef where you're catching coral trout, or your emperors, small GTs, possible wrasse as well. So with that, I'm going to be fishing two setups, um, a P3 and predominantly P6 because it is shallow, the reef's really sharp and it is a competition. So I want to be skull dragging the fish out of there, mate. So what have done really well for me in the past are these, the Missing at Sea Death Wobble. Very good, just that deeper profile, really crazy side to side action. So I'll be taking that. All of these smaller stick baits, they're like they're sinking or slow sinking, apart from Two. So um, there's two floaters in there, but normally for trout and all that stuff, I use like a sinking or slow sinking lure. So that deep bodied um, missing at sea, I'll be taking the Yemen's because I've got to do some testing on this one with the rattle. So I'll take them. So that's three light tackle lures so far. I really like the look of this black ledge, sick color. And again, it's that deeper profile, which I, for whatever reason, I think the trout really like. I'll take one of these red tanks because I've never thrown one before. That thing looks pretty good. Siren, in case there's tuna, I know there's yellow fin and really big long tails there. Um, sirens are pretty much the best tuna lure on the planet. So I'll take that. And what else? These little floating um, Nomad Riptides are actually really good for a cheap plastic lure. They're actually amazing and they come rigged with BKKs, so you don't even need to bother changing anything, which is nice. And I'll probably take that OTL as well. Just, um, I think for RAS and stuff, that floating lure where you can just stop it and leave it there, really good. So that's the selection. You wanna have a look? Flight tackle selection. That's it. That's all I'm gonna take. Scary. I probably should take two of each, but um, we'll see how we go. Big floating stick, stick baits are kind of a difficult one because there's, I think for me, there's a fine line between like, for GTs you want a lure, a big lure that has a big presence like that, but then it's also really, really heavy as well. So um, it's not like a viable option for casting all day. So there's a bit of a fine line between getting a lure big enough um, that is still relatively easy to cast and still swims really well. So I've got a few that I'm definitely gonna take. I'm definitely gonna take the Blaze, Blaze Garage Burn. That thing's caught me GTs before. Casts a fucking mile. 
and um, has a really good action and you can fast wind it across the top really easily. So I'll take that. Oh, again, I'll take an OTL because this is like my favorite floating stick bait. Action's so good and it's just so easy to use. That's a 130 gram. And I actually stole this one from Briggsy. Thank you, Briggsy. It's a Patriot Design Fat Pat 260. Um, I've used this before and the action's just really good. And like I said, big presence, 260 mil long. So I'll take that, that's three. And I'll take this. Gaia works, Guya works. Um, amazing looking lure. And you can see that it's like a pretty upright design. Swims fucking ridiculous. So I'll take that as well. Four definite floating stick baits. I'll see how I go with how much um, room I have at the end. And if there is room, I'll probably will put a couple more floating stick baits. Probably the... um. Big jack fin and the big siren. Uh, sinking stick baits. What have we got here? We've got Orion's, Black Ledge, Siren, Yemen's, and Red Tank there. Julian from Black Ledge is coming on the trip, so I might go light on packing too many Black Ledges. So I'm definitely going to take that Siren, which is extreme fast sink. So that thing's going to get down deep as. I'm going to take my Yemen's because I want to catch some fish on them. Take the red tank because I've never actually used that one before. And this is a lure that I actually wasn't going to throw ever because this is, um, there's a guy that makes these, fuck, what's his name? I fished with him in Oman. He makes Orion lures. I've just had the biggest brain fart ever. It'll come to me. But he's the biggest legend and he's just an old time fishing lord. When I fish with him in Oman, he's like, 65 and he was just smoking gts in no qualms not even breaking a sweat so he gave me that lure as a gift and um, i wasn't ever going to throw it but special occasion big money on the line i might have to all right poppers 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 what do you take i've done really well before obviously on the jack fin otl the black ledges have all done me really well the yemens have done me really well and Weirdly enough, this thing, it's not a popper, it's just like a skipping pencil, the Nomad Dartwing, as you can see. She's got a few teeth marks in it, but this has caught me some really good GTs, so that's definitely coming. It's the easiest lure in the world to use. Cast a mile, you just high tip it and wind. The Eamons going in. This, I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't tried this one. This is a flare, new design, black ledge. I'll take that. Nice and what I like about it is it's, quite narrow and thin so you get better hook exposure whereas like a lot of other poppers like they're a lot fatter in the body you can see that so i'll take that I'll take a 130 gram vlf and i'll take this otl as well because it actually is really easy to use and cast a mile off the, and i can use that on p6 also Yep. Alrighty, um, lures are packed. It's all my top water lures in here. Handy little lure bag I got from Duncan at Fishhead. All my light tackle lures, Tupperware box. And then while I was just rummaging around, I found a few essential things that I always take on a trip. This stuff, zinc, um, this is surf mud. It's all natural and it is amazing. If you don't want to get sunburnt, get that stuff on your head, protect yourself from skin cancer, very important. Other things, pliers, de-hooking pliers. They've got cutters on them. These ones are from Gerber. Really, really good. Braid scissors. Well, they're a bit stuck at the moment, but um, again, from Gerber, these things are amazing. Cut anything, bottle opener on them, all the important stuff. Um, need a little spray, but really good. And you can't even fish heavy without a pair of good split ring pliers. So these things come everywhere. Cutters on them, split ring opener at the top. These ones are from Tristan, Missing at Sea. Um, the other ones I use, I hate to say it, but they're that brand that I put tape over. And their split ring pliers are also very good. Their cutters are shit though. Also, here we got leader. Um, the lightest leader I'm gonna use is 80 pound, so that'll be light jigging light casting with those smaller stick baits p6 casting i'll go up to 130 pound or 140 pound 
for fishing those reef, shallow reef flats for trout and stuff. The heavier the leader, the better. I think, yeah, they can shy away, but a trout races out of its hole that quickly to smash it, it's not gonna matter. 180 for heavy jigging for doggies. And that one's a little bit harder, the ocean record, than the standard Varadash shock leader. And then 200 for P10 top water GTs. Um, I, the reason I use this leader, I think I've said it before, it's obviously quite thick because it's 200 pound, but it's still soft enough to be able to tie knots. And with your FG on heavy gear, it's soft enough that your braid can like, bite in and get some hold on it. If you're using fluorocarbon over 100 pound, it's so hard to tie knots, so don't even bother. I would recommend that later. That's pretty much all the later I use. It's really good. And then there's this stuff. This is Varavas SS Assist Line. This is what I use for tying my assist for doggy jigs. Oh, I've got some made up somewhere. I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, some there from Vanuatu still. There we go. So that's, uh, if I can get it untangled, that's just a hot drift churn. I think that's 130 gram. Um, that there is that Varavas assist cord and a BKK deep jig hook. The hooks are fucking unbendable. Um, so yeah, that's how I rig my heavier jig stuff for doggies and all that kind of stuff. And this assist cord, it's a lot of the standard assist cord you get, it's um, a bit softer. And I think this stuff, while you still get bitten off by Spanish or something, it just gives you a bit more extra um, strength and abrasion resistance so that's why I use that I don't bother with heat shrink or anything but um, I figure the tags a bit of a fascinator as it is and I've never really used these but these weird like figure eight solid rings it's a bit of a gimmick a normal solid rings probably fine but thought I'd give it a go look pretty steezy expensive we're on that jigging stuff. I know I'm probably jumping all over the place, but I just got shit going on everywhere, so bear with me. Um, the jigs I'm taking, I'm taking a handful of like longer knife jigs because there is amberjack there. Um, so I'll take a handful of them. Um, sea falcon, that one, that's another hot strift churn, 160. Very good for doggies. I caught a lot of doggies in Fiji on that. Um, and then this is all the smaller stuff. So these are or 80 gram missing at sea these ones these are a few random ones that's a hot one this one here is probably one of the more famous dog tooth jigs it's a seven seas something or other don't know about the color but um for whatever reason doggies like them um a couple more missing at sea ones some um, that i stole from ocean blue drift churns and missing at sea there i think um I've got a lot of missing at sea stuff because it's Tristan's brand and I like helping help helping him out. But these um, 80s and 100 grams are really good. Really good. And I like the silver color with that Lumo. For whatever reason, fish just seem to eat it. And with that style jig, I run these. I'll show you the packet. Um, they are from BKK, Sea Ranger, Assist Hooks. They got that little glow fascinator thing. Caught big Spanish on these and um, I got lucky, but a really strong hook for a small little setup. So that's my light jigging hooks that I use. They're pre-rigged. With all the jigging hooks and assist cord and stuff, you obviously need split rings. Um, for this, I don't use these split rings on my top water stuff. I use these for jigging because jigging the split ring does not matter at all. One more thing that you need is solid rings. I have some shout ones, I have some BKK ones. Solid rings, you want to tie to your solid ring because your hook's going to your solid ring and your leader's going to your solid ring as well. The split ring doesn't matter at all. So you don't need to spend heaps of money on expensive split rings but spend money on good solid rings. I'm here before I get into the rods and reels and all that sort of shit. Beachy's just rocked up and Beachy here is the Australian dealer for hops. And Beachy actually gave me this and it's the best thing ever. And I just got this new suitcase and it fits perfectly. This is what I put my reels in when I travel. 
So I can fit like six reels in there. I know there's only five spaces there at the moment, but I can fit like six reels. And it's hard and it keeps them protected. So if you're traveling a lot, these are very good. Okay, next thing, hooks for top water lures. I use BKK GT Rex barbless pretty much on everything. And then on my stick baits, I'll run a treble on the belly and a tail single. And the singles that I use are BKK Diablo inline singles. So I've got a range of sizes of singles on there to suit different lures. And I have in the GT Rex trebles, I have five O's, six O's and seven O's. And then for the smaller lures, these are really good, the BKK Raptors. I have them in all kinds of sizes. That's a 5.0. I have 4.0s, 3.0s, 2.0s, and down to like size one for those smaller stick baits. But these things are actually incredible. They're super sharp and they're super, super, super strong. They're the hooks I use. So I would strongly suggest getting some because they are the goods. Those smaller wrappers, they are barbed, but on all the big stuff, I don't use barbs. You don't lose fish because you don't have barbs. You lose fish because you're shit at fighting fish. Huh? Because you're spastic. Yeah, exactly. Keep the line tight. Sure, you can still pull hooks like you can with barbs if it's not hooked up properly. But once they're in with barbs, if you fight it properly and don't give it slack line, the hook's not coming out. And like I've said before, it's a lot safer for you and the people around you if you're casting and someone gets a hook in their head, arm, leg, eye, it comes out a lot easier with no barb than it does with a barb. So that's why I use barbless. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, I've still got my schmozzle everywhere. Um, I'm gonna pack my rods. Obviously, all my rods that I'm taking are from Zanac. If you're in Australia and you wanna get a Zanac, contact uh, Duncan at Fishhead Tackle. He's your man for all that sort of stuff. If you're in America, there is currently no dealer for Zanac in America or Hawaii. If you are chasing a Zanac over there, you can contact me and I can pass you their direct email address. Um, I've done that for a bunch of guys and um, they love their rods. So yeah, if you're in the States, do that. If you are anywhere else in the world um, and you don't know how to get one, you can contact me as well and I can pass it on for you and find you a dealer in whatever country you're in. Yeah, all right, show you what rods I'm taking and how I pack them. Okay, rod tube. First of all, I'm just gonna say that this is actually not my rod tube. This is a rod tube that I borrowed from Duncan at Fishhead a long, long time ago and somehow I've ended up taking on trips time and time again. I actually don't know what brand it is, but um, it's, it's pretty good. The only thing I would say about it is like, you gotta be really strategic on how you get your rods in because that's the only way to get them in there. Um, but once they're in, it's pretty strong. I've even watched someone accidentally stand on this and squashed it all the way down and I had a brand new Tadizo in it. I didn't say anything at the time. I went and checked that my rods were all right. Rod was fine, but I was not happy with that, Jimmy. He just did it. Noticed he did it and walked away without saying anything. It was full on. But luckily, two protected the rods. All right, these are the setups I'm taking. There's six in total. I've got one spare 80 to 100 there. I'll just give you a quick look at them all and tell you what they're actually doing. And if you haven't seen, these are my new reels. I've changed from Shimano to now using Daiwa reels. So, um, yeah. I've got my 8200 here, that's my heavy popping stick, and on that I'm going to put this, which is a Daiwa Saltiga 6500. It'll be spooled with P10 Taz on it. Next setup is this one, that is my Tabizo 83150. On that I've got a Saltiga Expedition 5500, a little bit over spooled with P6 Taz on. So that's the one I'm gonna be doing some stick baiting with and all that like um, flats, reef flats fishing where you've got to really lock up and drag them out. Um, next one is P3, I think. Um, it is my Zanac Fikido Twitch, amazing little rod. Um, and that is a Daiwa Saltiga 4000H with P4 Tazline on that one. 
Um, that's probably my new favorite setup, that one. That rod is incredible. Then what do we got? Jigging. So there's three casting setups, three jigging setups. So the heavy jigging, this is a new prototype from Zanac. I think I've got the wrong one. That's the heavy jigging one. Um, so this is the Zanac Tabizo heavy jigging prototype. This is the first kind of heavy jig rod they've done in like probably 10 years. The last one was the Fakito Bull, which is the one I normally use. So pretty interested to give that a try. On that, I'm running this big, massive thing, the Daiwa Soltega Dogfight 8000. On that, I'm gonna have uh p8 tasline next rod is another prototype it's slightly lighter than the last one this is like um a sort of mid-range jigging setup again prototype looks amazing feels really good i really like this one um, and that is going to have this um catalina so it's just got the old catalina 5000 spool on it P6 Tasline on that one. So that's for in Australia for like um, all your kingfish jigging, all that kind of stuff. That setup is going to be really mental. And then the final one I'm going to take um, is this one. This is the Light Jig Zanak Ikari. So this is the one that's a carbon core construction. I've had it in videos before and it looks like a noodle, but because of this carbon core construction, it can actually really handle a good bend and you can put a lot of power behind it so um that's a really really fun rod to use it's so thin and looks really dainty but it's really good and on that 4000 catalina with p4 tasline so yeah that's my setups I wasn't even filming then um yeah that's my setups i'm taking this Audi. um pretty psyched all my Zanaks, I've been using Zanaks for like three years now and the guys at Zanak have been epic to me. Their rods are amazing, they're a family run business and um, they make, unlike a lot of the big rod manufacturers, they make all their stuff in house, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, the only thing I will say with Zanak, if you get one, be prepared because once you get one, you won't want to go back to what you were using before. So, um, unless you. They're, um, they're, <laughs> this guy's a nook. You don't want to have a nook when you're trying to film your fishing video. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm taking. I'm really looking forward to trying these reels as well. Um, I've, my whole life I've only ever used Shimano, so I'm looking forward to trying something different in the divers and see how they go, and I'll give you guys some feedback. Um, just as a side note, I paid for these reels. I'm not sponsored by Daiwa, um, and I'm, keen as always to give you guys like a unbiased opinion on them. I'm not gonna fucking sugarcoat it if something breaks, I'm gonna show you. So um, yeah, I think that's really important. And for me, it's important that I'm honest in the, when I do review stuff that I'm honest in it and it allows you guys to actually trust the bullshit I'm talking. So um, yeah, sweet. I'm going to put them in the rod tube, which is the worst bit of the whole thing. And then I'm going to have to spool me reels. And then I'm pretty much packed. Nice.